boy was brought back to life. And it can also be true that you can say, honestly, did he have a double portion? Yeah. Yes, because not only was it an exact copy, but he had twice as many miracles. Yes. I'll, I'll list them for you real quick if you want to write it down. Of course, I'm sure you all write your notebooks. Uh, Elijah wrought eight miracles and Elisha 16. That's a double portion, isn't it? That's right. And every one was a parable in action. Elijah shut heaven 17.1. First Kings. Elijah had oil multiplied. Seventeen fourteen, when that widow woman was taken care of it. In First Kings seventeen twenty two, the widow's son was raised from the dead. Verse twenty three of chapter seventeen as well. That's the third miracle. The fourth miracle was fire came down from heaven in eighteen thirty eight. Then. He prayed that it would rain. That's right. Amen. He could control the weather just like we can. Like we read last Thursday, James 5. It rained. That was the fifth miracle in 1845. And then in 2 Kings 1.10, it says fire came down on 50. Yep. And then 2 Kings 1.12 says fire came on another 50. Then we see where he was able to cross the River Jordan, 2 Kings 2.8, and walked across on dry ground. Yep. Those were the eight miracles of Elijah the prophet. And then, of course, he was caught up to heaven in a whirlwind. A chariot of fire had separated him from Elisha. Is that eight nine? Well, I'm just listening to these eight, and now I'm going to read this the 16th of Elisha. 2 Kings 2.14, Jordan was divided because he took that mantle and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? The waters were healed in 2 Kings 2.21. Thirdly, remember them kids? Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. She bears come out of there, man. Tore them kids up, man. I mean, them kids bore those scars the rest of their life. That's right. Everybody who saw those kids knew, you don't go around mocking the man of God. Amen. You might think you're getting away with cracking jokes about the preacher around the dinner table. But in the end, no. it don't pay to make fun of the preacher. There's a verse in there that says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Yes. So that was a great lesson in 2 Kings 2.24 where the bears came out from the wood and tore them kids up. Fourthly, there was water for kings in 2 Kings 3.20. Water for kings. And then in 2 Kings 4, 1 to 6, there's oil for a widow. Then there's gift of a son in 4, 16, and 17. And then he's raised from the dead in 4, 35. That's the seventh miracle of Elisha. Then there's the healing of pottage in 4, 41. That's the eighth miracle. Then the bread was multiplied in 2 Kings 4, 43. The name and the leper was healed. We just read that recently where Jesus pointed out that, isn't that funny that when that old man was around, the only guy that got healed was a foreigner to Israel. <laughs> Good people were smart. They'd all been in line to go see the preacher, but no, they weren't that smart. Israel wasn't worthy. Sometimes the prophet's not got any honor in his own country among his own kinfolk. Name and the leper, he was healed in 510. Then his old servant Gehazi, he was smitten in 527. He got leprosy. Trying to take advantage of that healing of the leper. Right. That's the 
eleventh miracle, then twelfth is one of my favorite stories in all the Bible. And the iron did swim. <laughs> yeah. The iron was caused to swim in Second Kings six six. Swimming iron. Then the thirteenth miracle was sight to the blind in 617. And the fourteenth miracle was the sm uh, smiting of blindness to those enemies that came in 618. Then the restoring of sight in 620. That's the fifteenth miracle. And then last but not least, the thirteenth miracle, or sixteenth I mean, is that one that was brought back to life after he had been dead. In 2 Kings 13, 21. It would be a 13th minute. Mm. So I really believe that just like Elijah and Elisha, that it's essentially that's what we've got going on. And so when the Bible says that John the Baptist was Elijah and that Jesus said Jesus clearly said that John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah, that I believe that what that meant was that the miracles associated with Elijah, that spirit of God on Elijah, where Elijah could do the miracles that he did. But John had those powers, you know, as well. That like the Lord said about John, you know, none greater than one of them. I mean, imagine there's a little kid that's been filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Right. He's the only case of anybody that was saved since he was a kid. <laughs> right. Right. I really I don't know where it exists in the Bible, but that one case. Of course, you can say it's true of Jesus, of course, but you definitely, Jesus says exception, you know, he's not necessarily uh, a sinner like John the Baptist was, but John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. So when Jesus said there's none greater born of woman, and that therefore he was the forerunner of the Messiah, and rightfully he was there to help prepare Israel for Jesus' coming, Again, even though know, we only preached for six months, you know, before Jesus stepped off the shore and John baptized him, and then, I mean, his ministry was awful short. You know, if it, if it was a whole two years, I'd been surprised. <coughs> because, boom, bam, like we're going to read uh, real soon. Uh, you know, it's not going to be long, and they're going to cut his head off. And like he said, he must increase, I must decrease. So it's a very interesting thing, because again, now we don't believe in reincarnation. Of course not, like the world teaches reincarnation. But at the same time, yes, we do believe in reincarnation, in the sense that the Bible is very clear that uh, Judas has been here before, he's coming back again. That's right. Amen. Judas is the third time, actually. Uh, you know, Jesus has been here and he's coming back, uh, but he's uh, been raised from the dead. But there are theophanies of the Old Testament, and Christophanies. And there was a dude who was the priest of the Most High God called Melchizedek. And uh, anybody that's not of Aaron's priesthood to become a priest can only become a priest after the order of Melchizedek. So we've got all these truths found in the Bible that we can't deny they're really there. Uh, so we can't properly plug it in but we can't deny that, of course, in the spirit world, among the demons and devils, of course, a devil can claim to be in a hundred different people in, in that devil's own lifetime. Sure. And the people can be fooled and think, oh, I must be reincarnated. Right. It's but it's the devil deceiving them yeah. so that they'll never believe the Bible, never trust Christ. And because uh, among those people who talk about these things, you know, they're absolutely sold on them. The occult world believe, yeah. right. you know, or they totally deny anything because they don't know their Bible. Right. It's very hard to find somebody that believes the Bible and not to say that, well, Jesus has been here more than once and he's coming back and Jesus is coming back and I'm coming back. Amen. Mm -hmm. Moses and Elijah doesn't come back once. Right. They don't come back right. once right. in Matthew 17 and they're coming back again. Amen. So, 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 you know, we just don't know everything that the Bible tells us is to know about the spirit world. It's, it's real. Amen. 
that's why if they ever do get all excited and say, hey, we found life in outer space. Well, what fool didn't know that? Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, when Job 41 clearly says, it, yeah, well, of course, you know, Leviathan's going back and forth. He's a red dragon and he's going back and forth. Reporting into God, coming to the earth, raising hell, deceiving the people, going back and reporting into God. It's like the book of Job says in chapter 1, chapter 2. He walks in among the sons of God. So, of course, his son's been here before and his son's coming back. <laughs> and um, so this stuff is real. But, you know, modern man can't keep up with it. And only a real Bible believer understands it. And half of our church ain't even Bible believing. So they don't believe a word of it. You know, they're all living in Lulu land, you know. Yeah. The truth is they got one foot in the 501c3 and one foot in the Bible believing church. And they're really, you know, they're not sure yet. It's sort of like old uh, Samson, you know, they keep shaking themselves. Saying, they right. know the power to get part of it. They think, well, if I just shake myself, I'll, I'll be myself. I'll have the power back. <laughs> no, the truth is it's done let them. They ain't got it. Amen. Go ahead and preach. Preacher, yeah. preacher. Come on. Right. Come on. Yep. So uh, that's kind of where we're at in these end times, see. And the Lord's fixing to come back. You know, some of us believe it. And man, we get yeah. excited. Amen. We see a little bit of confirmation of the Bible. Man, we get excited. Amen. See, see there, we've said it all along. Uh -huh. So much fun to be ahead of the pack. Yeah. Amen. By being a Bible man. So getting back to our text here now, Malachi 4. So again, he said, Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And in a real sense, uh, John the Baptist did that. Amen. Because he had the spirit of Elijah. Uh, the Bible tells us. Well, let's look at Matthew 17 when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration. And we'll see it was confirmed that when Jesus was here, the disciples asked him this question. And his disciples asked him, what, saying, then why say the scribes that Elias must first come? Amen? Ain't that the question tonight? Brother Collins just asked that question. Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Now isn't that interesting? Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say to you that Elias is come already. Now isn't that an interesting word, already? I'll never get learning how to spell already and all right learning all right has two L's in it, but already always has one. Amen. Amen. You need to know how to spell that word. Because it's saying something different. Amen. To be already is not to be all right. Amen. And verse vice. Amen. Elias is come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Just like they were allowed to cut off John the Baptist's head, they're going to be allowed to kill me too. Jesus is trying to warn his disciples. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Amen. So... Isn't that interesting? Let's look at Luke 1.16. Luke 1.16. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. See? Just like we read in Malachi 4. This is what John the Baptist was doing. He was fulfilling these verses. That's why he... And this is what Elijah will do the second time when in the middle of the tribulation period him and Moses show up. And the children of Israel are trying to hide. Here comes Moses and Elijah doing miracles in Jerusalem and raising hell. 
because the Antichrist is going to be so bad, wanting to kill him for street preaching in Jerusalem and, and uh, encouraging the Israelites to resist him and stay true to Jesus until finally he's going to be allowed after they preach for three and a half years. And he's going to finally be allowed to kill them. And their dead bodies will lay in the street of Jerusalem. And all the television cameras be on. Everybody be partying, giving each other gifts. Yeah. And It'll probably be Christmas time. And that's yeah. why it's easy for them to just ship the gifts and say, man, this is because, man, we got a great day. The preachers are gone. We finally quit street preaching in the world, man. It's finally gone. No more street preaching. It's a great day. They're going to be so happy. But give them about three days, three nights of them. He'll jump up and wave to the camera and jump away to go. Because <laughs> the Bible says the whole world's going to see him. Yep. From the so south, CNN from the news, south man, south. Fox News, man, they're going to be looking for a foxhole to find, man. <laughs> they'll do some rise from the dead and wave at the camera and take off. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, let me just finish this text here, and then we'll get back to the question. Many children of Israel shall turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power, there it is now, in the spirit and power of Elias, mm. to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And again, I just remind you that John did that for six months before Jesus stepped out of the woods and then Jesus was then sure enough, John's ministry began to decrease and Jesus' ministry began to increase right. until finally even Jesus went on up to Galilee because John the Baptist was gone. Right. Right. He didn't cut his head off. And that's when Jesus was able to just step right back into Galilee, in that whole region where John had been preaching, and pick up all the disciples that even John had. So that now Jesus, everywhere he goes, he don't just have 12, he's got 70. By Luke 10, he's going to be sending the 70 out two by two. And you'll use what we learned Sunday to teach the 12 to go two by two. To help teach the 70 out to go two by two. So, yeah, that's some great stuff there. And uh, Go ahead, Brother Collins. You had your hand up again. Yes. You said that uh, Moses and Elijah will appear at the beginning of the tribulation. No, no, I think not to be in the middle of the trip. In the middle, yeah. And be around for three and a half years during Yeah. And then get killed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In other words, they show up in the middle of the trip and uh, encourage Israel, help Israel to stay true and hide in the wilderness and so forth and so on. But then at the very end, though, after preaching for three and a half years, then they finally get it in the neck. And... Um, so that's another reason why they're going to stay true to Jesus and not take the name, number, mark of the beast and stuff and keep preaching Jesus and not get discouraged because God's going to send them Moses and Elijah there. That's going to be a part of the impetus to keep them going and keep them growing and keep them witnessing so that when Revelation 7 says, you look to heaven, how many is there? There's not only the 144,000 virgin Jewish preacher boys that are all saved there's also great multitudes from every nation and every tongue. Right. And a great multitude no man could number. Who are these? Well, these are all the converts of the children of Israel during the tribulation period right. that uh, are on fire and winning these souls during the tribulation period uh, thanks to God giving them Moses and Elijah to help them stay true to God and not quit. And again, also there's some verses there in Jeremiah talk about probably David will be back too. David would be back too. So God's going to give Israel Elijah, Moses, and looks like David. I mean, if you were a Jew and you're out there hiding in the wilderness, I mean, wouldn't you be encouraged to hang in there if, if David yeah. was back? <laughs> if Moses and Elijah was back, and these guys who do the miracles, hey, you need some bread? There you go, buddy. You know, well, Moses. <laughs> right. Right. Fall down, fire on our enemies, and oh man, we, we think we, we're right back right. to the old day, Old yeah. Testament days, you know. We'd be eating man in the wilderness. Well, everything the Bible says happened, that's why he's calling his son out of Israel again. All that's double prophecies. It's not just, oh, huh, let's read this boring stuff in Exodus. Once upon a time, this happened to the Jews. No, no, it's all going to happen again. Amen. During that three and a half years of hell on earth, uh, 
great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, the Bible calls it. All these scriptures are going to come fulfilled. It says that in the Old Testament, uh, minor prophets, Micah, Nahum, that, uh, yeah, all that stuff is going to come again. God's going to feed his son again. Right. The children of Israel again. And as Moses and Elijah, he's going to do it with. Now, again, for our prayers, friends, when did Moses ever show up in Elijah? If it's all already happened in the past, I don't remember him showing up any time, doing anything. In fact, we just read the verse in Matthew 17. I mean, Elijah and he, uh, Moses showed up then. But uh, they weren't turning anybody's heart to nothing. They're just talking to Jesus about his death at Jerusalem, his decease at Jerusalem. Right. So, oops, the prayers got another problem. Yep. I throw the baby out with the bathwater. She's got more problems. He thought he was solving some problems, but he's ended up making more for himself. So, uh, so we kind of covered that when we went through our Revelation study there in Revelation 11. Because the Bible speaks of these two olive trees that stand before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's no denying that's who they are, you know, the two olive trees. So, hey, that was some good questions. You want to keep going with this or you want to get back to Malachi here? So then they'll proceed with the uh, signs and wonders, I imagine, being that they're dealing with the Jews, since the Jews require a sign, do you think that they'll yeah. be yeah. back uh, to Most their likely, because uh, the book of Revelation does say that they're able to call down fire on their enemies and, and, right. and, and do those miracles that they did the first time they were here. Yeah. Let's look at it real quick, Revelation 11. Okay, here we go. Let's go here one, and there was give me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar of them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. So the temple will be rebuilt, but not totally rebuilt and reestablished in an Old Testament economy sense. Mm -hmm. Because it's built, yes, and yeah, they've reestablished sacrificing animals and stuff in there, but, but the problem is because the Arabs are keep giving them hell even today, <laughs> and we won't let them build the temple yet. Uh, for sure, part of the compromise they're going to have to do when they do rebuild the temple is uh, they're not going to be able to take up the outer court area yet because it's going to be given for, for anybody who wants to trample on it. It's given unto the Gentiles. The holy city shall be, they tread under foot 42 months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees. Zechariah 4, 11 to 14. And the two candlesticks. You know, I just read Zechariah 4.10 Sunday, didn't I? Remember that? Uh-huh. Zechariah 4.10. Right. Well, you want some fun, just read on. Don't stop at 10. Go on down to 11. <laughs> and read a little further, which you know, it'll be a blessing to you if you do. Because, again, you'll see that, yes, God has a special place for Moses and Elijah in heaven. And they're right there before the throne. One's on the right hand of him, one's on the left hand. But the two olive trees, the two candlesticks standing for the Lord of the earth. If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So they still have that ability to bring down fire on their enemies right. in the future. And when did that happen after the resurrection of Christ? Right. Prayer has stepped up. <laughs> it hasn't been fulfilled. Right. It will be. Oh, he's only thinking, he's only speaking spiritual, you know, like, uh, Heretic Harold says, uh, the Lord came back in 1988 and did away with the church, and now the rapture happened here a few months ago, and now, get out of here. He's got to change the word of God. Why do you think he can't go by the King James Bible? I bet every time he says world, they think it's an age. Every time he says age, it says world. I'm sure that's probably true, like the, uh -oh, New Schofield does. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, mm -hmm. and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. <laughs> Whoa! That's good stuff. 
So just like the plagues of uh, Egypt, when Moses was here the first time and he could turn uh, all them flies and dust and turn the water to blood and all that stuff, man. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that sinneth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall the lie shall lie in the street of the great city, which virtually is called Sodom in Egypt, Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So where's that? It wasn't New York. <laughs> right. right. Amen. It wasn't Amen. modern day Iraq Babylon. <laughs> right. No, that's Jerusalem, man. Amen. The same old bloody Jerusalem. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry. Oh boy, here we go. Mary, Mary, Mary. Mary. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Songs. Yeah. Yeah. Making merry. Send gifts to one another. Here we go. Oh, Making oh, merry. Ho, ho, ho. Shall send gifts one to another. They're not giving God anything. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. That's why they're happy. Right. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them that saw them. Oh, no! And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither! They ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. At the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake was slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Mm. So again, when we've laid this out before, we know that the Bible explains the book of Revelation by talking about the seven seals the seven trumpets, and the seven vials. Right. And it's not because seven plus seven plus seven is 21, and in 21 years, God's going to finally come back at the end of the 21 years. No. It's a seven-year tribulation period. And just like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John show you the three, you know, different angles from the same street corner of Jesus' life, One's showing you Jesus is king. One's showing Jesus is a man. One's showing Jesus is the servant. Uh, you got this seven-year tribulation period. And when you line them up, and it always gets to that last one, it always shows that the Lord's coming back. It always shows us what we call the second advent. Advent. Mm -hmm. See? Uh, it's the second advent. Somebody said, where's the word Advent come from? King James Bible. Uh -huh. Not Luther. It's an English word. <coughs> Do the Lutheran Jews? Oh, absolutely. Did the Catholics use it? Absolutely. Uh, it's just another uh, English word. It's found in our King James Bible with a sense of adventure. Have you ever seen the word adventure yeah. in the Bible? No, same not. There's, there's lots of English words uh, that have theological meanings. And of course, every counterfeit Christian church tries to steal these words and they throw them around a lot. For instance, the Lutheran church says Jesus. Uh, the Lutheran church uses the word Bible. It's not a word in the Bible. There's a lot of Bible terms, theological terms, but that don't mean they're Christian. So it's almost like somebody freaking out because we can say, oh, look, there's a constellation. <gasps> six digits, six digits, they're called in. We don't believe in astrology. No, we don't believe in astrology, but we ain't going to deny the fact that God put constellations in the sky. Amen. <laughs> He's Amen. Amen. Of course, Satan's perverted it. Of course. But, right. you know, you, so what? Yeah. <laughs> there's still great Bible truth. Bible about the sky and the stars, and there definitely is an adventure in Deuteronomy 28 and 56, 
Acts 19.31. It matured in Judges 9.17. If you can find pre-adventure, you can find a prevent. We should not prevent them. Just because people don't know English, they get excited sometimes and say, no, oh, that's not a Bible word. And there's not a Bible words that, or that are theological terms that we use. Right. Uh, there aren't a Bible. First, the word Bible ain't our Bible. You know, too bad. <laughs> But that don't mean that we don't understand what we're saying when we say it. Right. Amen. We talk about the nativity of Christ because you know, there was a time that he was born into this world. You know, or we call it the first advent because right. he's come into our world the first time, but now he's coming back a second time. Right. So you have to always distinguish, well, when are you talking about? The first advent or the second advent? Right. He's coming back more than once. Amen. Right. So the Bible clearly speaks of these things. What better English word to use, or theological word to use, since uh, pretty well everybody understands what these terms mean. That's why these cults steal these theological terms and even Bible terms, try to use them themselves. You know, salvation. Yeah, they're counterfeits. Of course, we're going to use salvation. Yeah. Jesus, Bible. <laughs> Same words we use. You know. We use these terms so we can understand what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We teach you in our Bible to, mm -hmm. to understand what the theological terms are as well as what the Bible doctrines are so you can intelligently talk to people. Right. Amen. Uh, and know what it is that uh, they're being deceived on. Because <laughs> they don't have a, you know, King James Bible, that's for sure. That's right. So where was I before I interrupted myself now? Uh, yeah, I was talking about how that uh, the Lord's going to say, come up hither. Yeah. They send up in heaven a cloud and their enemies behold them. What we're dealing with is a second advent there, see? Right. He's coming back a second time. Now, we don't ever call the rapture an advent because he doesn't come into the world and land on the world. He just comes right. in the clouds and then leaves. Right. So, so we're talking about something different when we speak of the coming of the Lord versus the return of the Lord. Right. So he was here, walked the earth for 33 years, 33 and a half years. That was the first advent. Right. And he's coming back a second time and he's going to run the world for a thousand years. Amen. And uh, so the Bible speaks of these things here. The Bible speaks how in the first three and a half years, it's kind of a peace on earth. And Satan's son's going to run the world, and everybody's going to believe he's a cool guy bringing peace to the world, even though he'll not have any arrows. He's got a bow with no arrows. Right, right. Uh, but then somebody's going to kill him. Somebody's going to try to assassinate him, and he's going to go down. He's going to be dead false prophet's going to raise him from the dead. And so, just like anyone else that's had a mortal wound, he's going to have a change in his personality. Uh -huh. And uh, he goes from placating the Jews, making peace with the Jews, uh, to now becoming a monster and breaking his, breaking his own covenant with them, uh, Daniel 9.27. Uh, and now he's out to kill the Jews, eat the Jews, flesh, drink their blood. Right. And um, so, this is a part of how the Jews are converted in a day, like Paul says in Romans. Because when God sends these two olive trees back to the earth to encourage them, to stand by them and help them, uh, they're going to be so pumped. <laughs> because while this dude is trying to kill them all off and kill the Jews and eat, drink their blood and eat their flesh, Man, they're going all over the whole world preaching Jesus. These Jews are unlike any Jew you ever met in your life because given the really definitely replacing the uh, church. Since we at the church and church age have been raptured out, uh -huh. now this tribulation church arises. It's just like the first church started out predominantly Jewish. This church starts out predominantly Jewish, 144,000. <laughs> Can't be any more Jewish than that. And they preach and they win souls and they do these great things. And uh, then, of course, multitudes get saved. And all these dudes are 
which these Jews are doing is they're going around preaching the same thing we preach today. Right. But these are Jews that get saved in one day, three and a half years into the tribulation period. They find our books, they find our tracts, they find our Bibles, and they take them, they run with them. And they go like mad and preach, 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 and win souls unbelievably during the tribulation period. Their primary books will not be the book of John, nor the book of Romans, but it will be Hebrews. Amen. 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 It'll be the book of Hebrews. Because they are again at the hundred and forty four thousand. Right. So primarily they'll use the book of Hebrews and then they'll make then the last books of the Bible. Hebrews, James, first, second Peter, first, second, third John, Jude Revelation. These are the books that they will use most. Just like today, we use mostly John and you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, First, Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First, Second Thessalonians, First, Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. And those are what we really emphasize because we are, you know, the Gentile church, and, and we can identify with all those things Paul wrote to those Gentile churches. So that's our real emphasis is. So, but we've studied Revelation, you know, of course, because it's, it's all profitable. Amen. It's all for us. It's all inspired of God, and it's profitable for all of us. Amen. Amen. And, we, and I can show you how we saved out of the book of Hebrews. I can show you how we saved out of the book of Revelation. And because the plan of salvation is in there, of course, too. I mean, the whole Bible is all about the blood of Jesus from the beginning Amen. to end. Amen. Amen. Uh, the blood bleed. Anywhere you cut it open, it'll bleed. Right. Right. It'll show you the blood of Christ. That's what saves anybody. Amen. Amen. Place for history. But we're just saying, just like we use, and our emphasis is on those books, because uh, we're the Gentile church. Um, these fellas, because they're principally the 144,000, they're going to be able to take those end times books, because they're going to be able to look at what's going on in their life and say, well, you just seen what happened yesterday, didn't you? Right. <laughs> well, you just seen what the president of America did. Yeah. They're going to say, well, you've seen what the Muslim over in Saudi Arabia said. And every day... The wild, crazy things, the monsters coming out of hell, biting people, stinging people, hailstones as big as Volkswagens and fire and blood coming out of the sky. I mean, they're going to point to that stuff and show them how that Hebrews, James, 1st, 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude and Revelation fit exactly what they're going through. Amen. And it's going to be those things, like it says in Revelation, those that keep his commandments. <laughs> <laughs> those that have had a promise left to them Hebrews 6, if they depart from it, it'll be impossible for them to be renewed. Because, yeah, it's talking about people taking that name and mark of the beast. Yeah, now. They're, they're going to hell now. They cannot be saved. They can pray all the prayers, please, Jesus, save me all they want. They're still going right. to go to hell. Right. Yep. Right. Once they take that name, number, and mark of the beast. Because the Bible in these books bears that truth out. Right. Like Peter right. said, it'll be better for them to not to have known the way of righteousness than after having known the way to turn away from it. Yeah. See, to them, that's going to make perfect sense. Oh, that's the mark of the beast, David. And then people will be thinking, now, what about, what about those people who lived before this? The, 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 we find these books over at Gateway, Anabaptist and stuff. What about them people? What did they teach about this? Oh, they just taught a man maybe could lose his rewards or lose his inheritance. But he couldn't lose his salvation. Right. Really? Yeah, because that was a different dispensation. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah, because because uh, no dude sat in the seat of, of the uh, mercy seat in Second Thessalonians two claiming to be God yet. Yeah. Right. But once that happens in the middle of tribulation period, bing dong, everything it's clear as mud, man. I mean, ain't no doubt. You know, they're going to, God's going to send them a strong illusion. They're going to believe the lie and be damned. Right. They're going to take the name, number, and mark. Because yeah. Revelation makes it clear once they've taken that, there, there's, no, there's no hope. Right. No hope. So the Bible implies there that, yes, it's a voluntary thing. The people will volunteer. No. There won't be no such thing as somebody forces somebody to take it. Yeah. It's like if they did even try that, just boom, the guy just kill over and die. He wouldn't. There's no man going to be forced to take nothing. So it's going to be a volunteer thing. Go ahead, Marley. Um, Sarah showed me something, a disturbing picture that was sent to her on her phone. That um, the guy 
guy was standing there in New York City with a t-shirt on and it said, if Jesus is coming again, I'm killing him again. And it showed a, a cross being thrown into a trash can. And I just thought, wow, that's really preparation for what so Yeah, it, well, it sounds like something I said in June. Right. Or, or, or someone along that you know, would, would say, or maybe even an atheist religion. Yeah, it was just a guy with a t-shirt with you that know, on it. You know, you know, you this, of course, too, we got to remember, there's a dude right now, you know, in Mexico. You heard about this dude, didn't you? He's in Mexico. No. He, he, he really claims to be the Antichrist. Really? Oh, yeah. And he's great. He's got a great following. Because he tells his followers, you know, you believe in me and, and take my 666 and you're all forgiven for your sins and you can commit all the adultery you want and drugs and stuff. I can't remember his name. But, uh, in Mexico? Oh, yeah. Where, what, Rico? Oh, he's in Puerto Rico? Yeah. yeah. But he's got a great following and people are joining him left and right all over the world. And what you basically got going on there is, of course, is another Jim Jones style person yeah. rising up yeah. from within the Catholic community of the Spanish people. You know, and so when you're, you know, when you're, when you're in that old dry eating crackers and sawdust for spirituality in Catholic Church, like yeah. most of these are Catholics have been all their lives. You know, the truth is they're just looking for a little bit, a little bit of life, a little excitement somewhere. Yeah. So when some dude comes along and says, I am the Christ, in fact, I am the Antichrist, and uh, I promise you to live with me forever, and there is no hell, you don't have to worry about no devil, no hell or anything, but I, you know, I'll forgive you. You can just live and sin with me. Well, these dear Catholics are flocking to him like crazy. Because now they don't have to give them away to the church. They don't have to genuflect anymore. Yeah. They don't have to crawl on grass, grass, glass, and beat themselves with whips or nothing. Right. I, I was so blessed. Uh, my son Benjamin sent me a <laughs> YouTube of these Catholic nuns that are they're doing their kata and they're doing their karate moves and their jujitsu and showing how they're taking their big wooden crucifix in their hand and hitting the guy in the heart with it and stuff. It's, 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 it's so funny, but yet, you know, if you've studied these moves at all, you know, this is for real. Uh, these nuns have been trained well. And uh, it's mostly that uh, um, Chinese karate is what it is. Uh, but, but when they hit the mat and stuff, you can see how they're falling and stuff. In structures and that, yeah, they're, they're being taught uh, a Shaolin form of uh, of uh, that karate stuff. But when they land in that, you tell it's the it's definitely the judo way to fall and everything. And, and man, they know their stuff. And, they're, and then what's funny is they got this group of Catholic ladies coming at you uh, with one in the front and two behind her, and that, and they're all in their habits, man, doing their kata, you know, and all that. And you can tell, man, they know their stuff. They're good. Some freaky stuff, man. And them old cat lookers, buddy, they're getting ready. There's no doubt they're getting ready. They are getting ready. And then when rightfully, they should. You know, again, I don't know if you've ever read The Sunday Visitor or not, but you do well to read the Catholic material once in a while. Especially since we live among so many of them here in Monroe. And, and of course, you should know they have their own training camp in the east in the in UP in the eastern section of the UP. And uh, where they're shooting guns every day. They're getting ready. And the reason is because if you read the Sunday visitor it's clear and all these Catholics are having these apparitions of Mary coming to them and mm -hmm. Mary's telling them, get ready. Get you some guns, get you some food, get ready. Because she's getting them ready to live for this day when this man comes and uh, to be survivors and make it through. Because, of course, she's not telling them that they're going to be raptured out. Yeah. You've got to go through it. Oh, yeah. So it's so interesting uh, to, to get inside your Catholic neighbors and friends' heads and ask them if they're a member of the Blue Army or not. Yeah. You know what you're saying when you say that, because that's their militia. Right. The Catholic Church militia. Just as sure as when the balloon goes up, there'll be an enclave around Dearborn. Believe me, the Catholics, they have their plans too. And, uh, and of course, your police force will be guarding these rich people with their army. 
There won't be no such thing as a Monroe City cop no more. That cop will be guarding the rich people in the community. He'll be the running cop. The rich people will run this county now anyhow. And the drug dealers in the school. And these city uh, protection rackets will be set up to protect certain people of certain religious values and certain principles that they hold in common, they'll enclave together. This is how all civil wars are. When the civil war comes to America, uh, same thing. They'll hire anybody. Gangs, cartels, whatever. Whoever's got the guns. They'll have the money and food and they'll hire whoever's got the guns and uh, they'll be protected. But you, of course, you'll be thrown to the wolves. You know, one of the most interesting things I've read today is somebody has said that already, because you know a lot of these rich people aren't around no more. They either moved out of the country or they've already moved into their bunkers. And I read a very interesting right. article somebody said today that says some of these bunkers have already been blown up. That's why there's so much turmoil going on, because there's already a resistance going on. We don't know about and uh, some of the Russian nukes that were stolen have already been expelled. That's what kind of brought that tsunami on from Japan. And then, of course, at the same time in the Mediterranean, if you remember, there was an American uh, submarine that was dry docked with its all its front end banged in. Or they said they ran into a mountain under the water. And, uh, all the, all the nukes have been accounted for now. All of them have been detonated except one. There's only one left that's not been detonated, they said. So it's very interesting. But you can read now, too. So, uh, praise the Lord, we got a Bible that tells us these things. So the Bible is very clear that we, we you know, we, 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 we don't have to be fooled. We don't have to be taken advantage of. There's no need for us to be deceived. We know what's coming. We know... Right. Amen. Uh, the Lord's looking out for us. He'll feed us in the time of famine, the Bible says. Amen. And so uh, we have nothing to look forward to except uh, the glory of the Lord coming back. Amen. And uh, it's going to be a great time. Amen. It, it's always been a great time living with the Lord, and it'll continue to be a great time, even Amen. though the whole world around us might go to hell in a handbasket, but that's okay. Because yep. we still know the Lord. We know why we're here. We know where we're going. The worst thing that happened, they just sent us to heaven a day earlier, too, or whatever. Right. But, uh, I mean, it would be, be like only a day or two, and then the Lord says, say, look, Dan, it's time to go back. And so, man, it will be awesome. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But when we come back, we're coming back on a cleanup detail. That's right. Like Joel says, and like these Old Testament prophets talked about. They'll try to thrust their sword on us, bing, and just trying to shoot Superman, you know. Right. We can chase them down, just chop their head. We can climb the walls like locusts. Ain't a thing they can do about it. <laughs> that must be why Spider-Man Spider -Man has such an appeal to Christian people, you know. The Bible says that the Lord's army, but they're able to climb walls. Yeah. This is the Lord's army, the Bible says. It's the Lord, oh, this is the Lord's... Man, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Amen. We can stop them, but they can't stop us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, it's really gonna happen. Yeah. You know, that's what separates the Bible believer from the person that says they're a Bible believer. Right. You believe the book or you don't believe the book. Uh -huh. <coughs> yeah. Okay, well, hey, that was pretty interesting. You know, that was interesting. We kind of got far afield there, but yeah. I thought that's interesting. We got into Elijah and Elisha there. The fact that they are coming back someday. Isn't it interesting that Elijah has gone to heaven in a whirlwind and not died yet, but when he comes back the second time, he's going to die. Right. Yeah. And Moses, he died, but they had a private resurrection. <laughs> And Michael was sent for his body, and Satan was there claiming yeah. somehow that he had a right to Moses' body. 
and he said, the Lord rebuke you. And of course, the devil had to let go of his body, let Michael take it on to heaven. <coughs> but now who's the other person that's never died in the Bible? Enoch. Enoch. That's right, Enoch. Enoch was not, for God took him, the Bible says. Right. So you've heard of astronauts, cosmonauts, and there's a was not in the Bible, amen? Yeah. <laughs> he was not, for God took him. And isn't it interesting that of all these people we've talked about, he's the only one that is, is, is never, he's going to never die. So we have these men, and the Bible clearly tells us that these things in the Old Testament happen for our examples. We know Moses is a picture of Israel. And how someday God's going to raise up Israel just like God raised up his dead body. He's going to raise up Israel. And like even tonight, as a nation, Israel, Israel ain't nothing but God tonight. That's right. That's right. right. It's going to change. Amen. It's going to change, man, one second after the rapture. When he raises up that 144,000. I mean, they're going to rise, man. It's going to be like a valley of dry bones. Coming back together. Standing up. In the spirit of life. In them. Amen. Wow. So, uh, Moses is a picture of Israel there. And, uh, in many ways, Elijah... is definitely you know, a picture of Israel being restored. But Enoch is almost the only example of the church. The fact that there's going to be some people that will never die. Elijah was caught up to heaven and, and uh, Elijah was only to come back and die. Moses was dead, took caught up to heaven and he's coming back and going to get killed a second time. How's that for reincarnation? What good reincarnation if you're going to die? You know? <laughs> and, um, but uh, Enoch, he was raised, and he never has died, never will die. Right. And that's a picture of a New Testament. Most of the New Testament churches that will be alive at his coming and never have to die. Definitely a picture. And like Moses striking the rock. I don't like you messing with his pictures. Amen. Mm -hmm. you, don't go, you don't go messing with his pictures. You leave little things alone. Because he's trying to show you Christ. Christ don't need to come back and die for your sins a second time. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you can't go to you can't go to purgatory and purge for your own sins and like a fire. Christ did it once for all, man. Well, hey, that's good. It's 8 o'clock. Let's go ahead and take some prayer requests. Amen.